I um, hope uh, you have many of you, you have seen it. Uh, if not, um, please be, be aware that it's probably the, the largest um, database of medieval and early modern charters in Europe because it's aggregating lots of databases, some of them which are aren't even yet um, uh, online uh, elsewhere. Some of them are online uh, elsewhere as well. And it's continuously growing with over half a million charters. Um, it's certainly something which is huge. <clears throat> uh, it's created by archives and not only archives, by richer digitization and by users. And that's one of the um, reasons why it's, well, yeah. Um, I could do a repeat a kind of talk which a colleague Franz Fuchs did once in, uh, in uh, seven years ago where he talked about Monasterium compared to other databases said, well, uh, Monasterium is not that nice because you don't know what you find, but then you find things you did not expect. Um, you should expect seals in Monasterium. And Monasterium has a data model in which seals have a dedicated uh, entity. So there are fields dedicated to seals. Uh, they are somehow flat compared to all the detailed descriptions I've seen yet. Um, they just allow to make a general description of seals or describe single seals. Um, to describe the uh, people, the person to which the seal refers. Um, to give the, the transcribe the, the legend of the seal, describe the material and the dimensions and the condition of the seals. Uh, one thing I like very much in the data model um, of the monasterium is that it considers seals not only as a physical object, but in their role as being an authentication object to the charters. That's in practical use, you won't not really realize because it's just a field saying, okay, there is a means of authentication. Um, that's the model. So that's what somebody would expect from all these 600,000 charters. Um, in reality, it's quite different. Um, you have lots of um, descriptions of single seals, seven, uh, 70,000, more than 70,000 um, fields uh, declaring themselves as describing single seals, and even much more um, describing only making only a general description of seals and not distinguishing between single seals. Uh, that's looking quite promising. So you would have uh, something like uh, 300,000 seal description. Um, if you look on the details, um, of this, um, these descriptions, you get a bit, well, maybe annoyed as a sigillographer. Because you see that all these data model possibilities just to transcribe the, the scripture on the seal, to describe the material, to describe the uh, very condition of the seal or the seal dimensions are rarely used. The element which is mostly used is the description of the person represented by the seal. Um, this might be, the case because archivists are not that interested in seals as you are. Um, I know that's not true because there are certainly archivists uh, here and I know that many archive uh, uh, are trained archivists. So I would not put this, make this uh, too uh, much too strong this argument. In particular, if you have a look in terms on terms which do describe seals properly. I use the German term wax, wax, um, which um, it, it, just searching for it and realizing that the material of the seal is much more often described in verbal prose than the field, the existence of data in this field would, may, uh, would um, uh, suggest us to expect. Um, that's something we have to be uh, aware of, that these descriptions are not meant to be highly structured, which does not mean that they are bad. Um, Monasterium has functionalities which um, uh, um, mediate a bit this problem, because if you do a full text search in Monasterium, then you get a long, long list. Uh, that's uh, I was looking for for uh, uh, for Zayde, or didn't have, should have looked up the. Zerico, filo zerico, um, uh, the uh, English word. And um, well, this, there are lots of lots of uh, hits, 
And you could drill down this search by selecting occurrences of the search term in specific um, uh, fields. So uh, starting with a generic term like box, you would find lots, lots of, of senses uh, and stuff which is related to uh, candles, but you would find description of seals as well. So drilling down, restrict your research um, to uh, seal description will help, uh, help you further. Still, um, this drill down does not mean that the, all the description of seals are covered because some of the archivists or the dis, uh, people describing, and not too uh, rarely, describe the seal in a context of, well, a generic description of the charter. So you could not really distinguish it when we uh, imported the stuff. Or, or we took um, a richer digitized uh, description of a charter in which there is no clear marker. Here now comes the seal description. Um, in the in, in the abstracts of the document, somehow sometimes the seal description is merged into the rest. So the, there is much information on seals, which is not dedicated, unfortunately, um, described. Apart from this, even if there are these many seal descriptions, um, the um, seal descriptions we have um, are still somehow promising. Um, in geographic distribution. Um, in particular, if you think of what Martina re reported uh, last Thursday, um, uh, considering uh, that the Czech material, um, there is very much seal descriptions. Uh, very often there are seal descriptions almost complete for the material from Estonia and from Romania. Uh, it's not that astonishing because Romania has not much um, uh, descriptions yet in monastery on that. So the, these few were described properly. Um, and with Estonia, it's unfortunately a similar case, although Estonia, I think, is uh, better covered because it's a small country and has started um, uh, literacy uh, very late. Um, and the more co confident things is the Czech Republic and to see Germany is uh, good as well in relationship to what is in Monasterium Net. Italy, this small bar should not um, surprise us because of course, Italy is not the country where the most um, people used um, in uh, used seals. So there are lots of uh, notarial documents and uh, you should not expect too many seals. And um, that's uh, just to give you a glimpse. So if you're from the Central European area, uh, you will probably be uh, happy if, uh, looking in Monasterium for seal description, you will find probably a bit better desc uh, described uh, structured description than elsewhere. The many, many uh, sigillants you find in Monasterium Net drive for a question I would very much be happy if somebody will start to work on it. Um, you have so many individuals named. So looking for an individual um, for a name uh, in Monastery that might, even if the area is somehow fitting, might give you images of uh, her, his seals or the, the institution seals, because that's uh, the description which is probably the most uh, detailed. Again, my presentation is a bit rich in caveats. And maybe afterwards you say, well, I didn't have a used monasterium. I should not use it. And um, I do hope that's not the case. Even uh, if you read now, okay, there are these descriptions about the sigillant, which is just the issuer. So no, not the name of it, not that good. Or uh, descriptions with which do not uh, describe a sigillant, but came uh, went into this field by some conversion problems when we ingested this uh, rich material and the descriptions from the archives were not clearly st structured enough. Um, you uh, cannot be sure that it's atomized so that each uh, sigillant is just a single person, it could be three persons. And sometimes you could even get names of people where you don't see a seal because it's lost the seal but the uh, people um, uh, uh, whose seals would be attached to the charter are named in the charter. Um, the great advantage of Monastery Net is that there are many, many images. And so it's an advantage to most of the traditional uh, editions and simple um, archival databases, although they, they improve. Um, the expectations 
um, that you have get an image is um, at least with these almost uh, 65,000, uh, 64, 400,000 documents where uh, we know there's a student description in the metadata and there is an image. And these images are, as you might have expected, images where you see the charter and um, where the charter has a seal attached and you can zoom in and see that the seal, well, good enough. Um, sometimes you are avoided because some of the archives were really diligent and created high resolution images of the single seals and you get high detailed images, um, which are probably as good as, I hope as good as uh, many of those seal images you can create for your seal dedicated databases. Which leads to conclusions. Um, first, I have to say, or to this first point, I would like to say, uh, add that Monastiernet is a project maintained by very, very, very few people. Um, there is, well, um, to half a people maintaining the infrastructure. There are sometimes projects programming on it. There are sometimes projects adding new data, and there's certainly not many projects uh, caring for the data. Um, so if the data from the archives comes in a bad shape, it stays very long in a bad shape. Still, the archivists do not create that bad data, and you have seen these numbers in this first impressions, that uh, Monastir Net has lots of interesting um, material, which should be used by, uh, for, by serialographers. Um, in particular, this relationship to the people. Um, but it is highly in in homogeneous in description. And from this, I would like to ask me, you, all of us, how we could improve it. Uh, the main uh, point I can make is that improving data in Monasterium is nothing you have to ask me or the archivist. You can do it by yourself. Because Monasterium, Monasterium that, um, um, uh, has a um, editorial functionality, an editor, with, where every user can change data, suggest ch changes, or extract your own collection and publish this own collection. So you could start to say, okay, I uh, collect a number of documents where uh, there are seals from, um, uh, from, from the, the nobleman in the 15th century in a specific area. And I go through the uh, appropriate archives, select these documents and start to describe the seals. Uh, you could change these via descriptions like this one, which is definitely wrong. Um, if you go, uh, uh, if you uh, save and edit this charter and uh, move to the editor, and in this um, charter editor, you find a dedicated field for seal description, uh, where in this case, it's easy, you just delete the markup for this sigillant, so the text uh, it can remain. Um, and then you could start even to think in terms, and now, so, sorry, the vocabulary comes in briefly, um, to mark up dedicated terms which are related to sigillographic uh, terminology. Um, that's one of the things where the workforce is lacking to add the vocabulary to this uh, resource and that linking terms in the document in the descriptions to the vocabulary should be made easy. Um, I hope that's becoming possible soon, but as I said, we are not uh, few not not rich in resources, um, which should then allow to start to use Monasteriumnet for purposes like multilingual search on this stuff and um, other um, solutions. Um, so the first answer to this how to improve Monasterium as a sigillographic resource would be please use it by en enhancing the data. If you um, edit a, a, a charter description, which is and what we have it published by in, in the context of the archive. There is a control mechanism, there is a review process, uh, so that there's, you don't uh, get the risk that people publish what they want under the name of the archives. But if you create your own collection um, from charters, you can copy descriptions into your, your own data set, then you can publish it under your name. Um, so that's the first 
point, I would say uh, how we could improve it by using it, by enhancing it, by using it for to, to describe seals as well. Um, the second step would be to describe it in terminology which, which um, helps um, to find terms, even if they use language which is not um, expected. So enhance it with this controlled vocabularies. Um, the third answer would be that the detection of uh, objects in images, as you have seen uh, by the presentation of Philip Schneider on thurs Thursday, is not the most complicated task anymore. Um, having enough training material, so having enough uh, boxes drawn around seals on images in Monasterium would allow to create automatic detection on the images that there is a seal. Um, and the last uh, proposal how to improve it would be, okay, if there is a community which wants to use Monasterium Net as a dedicated phlogistical research tool, so why not set up an, um, a view in, on this database, which focuses on the seals, which has different um, uh, search facilities, has different um, uh, um, indices than the current generic solution has. Uh, the data model would allow for this. And Monasterium.net is not forced to remain in this one uh, interface. The database itself is flexible enough to handle others. That would be my suggestions, ideas. Um, and now I'm curious about your suggestions. 